Valentin Slepukin from uh, US UCLA, and he will talk about the fascinating use of uh, network models and graph theory for uh, rhythm generator neural circuits. Valentin. Okay, thank you for introduction. So yes, I would like to uh, tell you about how connecti connectivity controls dynamics of rhythmogenic networks and how to apply it to the preposition complex. So preposition complex is a central pattern generator that produces inspiratory rhythm in mammals. And we would like to model it using the network of leak integrated fire excited neurons with dendritic cuts adaptation. Dendritic cuts adaptation means that the sensitivity of the neurons to the incoming spikes decreases as the calcium the concentration increases. And calcium concentration in turn increases uh, when a neuron receives more spikes. So in a nutshell, the model looks like when the sensitivity is high, the uh, voltage increases of the complex. Uh, it leads to the increase in calcium because of the a lot of spiking increase of calcium desensitizes the neurons. So voltage decreases and then calcium decreases also and the cycle repeats. So we write it down in terms of the equation and we solve this equation numerically and uh, we uh, get uh, this uh, periodic oscillations. So uh, to compare it with experiments, uh, uh, sorry, do you see the new slide? Oh, yes. Uh, so uh, to compare it with experiments, uh, you, uh, so we uh, study the uh, very simple experiment on the external simulation of the bursts. So where the preposition complex is uh, quite sensitive, which means that like you activate just four or a little bit more neurons out of 1000, and it already produces the burst before the time it was supposed to happen. And uh, we study it on three physiologically motivated networks uh, localized where the probability of the connection between two neurons is higher if these two neurons are closer to each other. Or the Shani, where the probability of the connection between any two neurons is the same. And uh, and small world where, which we obtain from Erdoshrenyi by adding some particular types of the motifs. Uh, we uh, look at the probability of the burst and the time to the burst as a function of the number of simulated neurons, and we compare it with the results of the experiment. So the results of the experiment are the gray squares here, and the results of the simulation are the scoured curves, and we see that the best overlapping happens for the case of the Erdoshrenyi network. And it is uh, kind of makes sense because the function of this complex is pretty simple. It's just to produce uh, rhythmic activity. So apparently just the simplest network, which is Erdoshrenyi, is enough to cover this function. So to conclude with this external stimulation part, we also would like to understand uh, which features of the network and the stimulated neurons are important to uh, predict whether the burst will happen or not. And we uh, look at the different quantities that we uh, uh, suggest by graph theoretical analysis, and we see which of these quantities is the best in predicting the burst. And we see that uh, the, it, the significant improvement happens if we uh, incorporate synaptic waves in a nonlinear way, which reflects the fact that uh, the neurons interact in a highly nonlinear way. So, however, this was just uh, activation of the burst. We are interested in a full cycle of oscillation, it's a full activity. And uh, for this, we study a simpler model. So instead of uh, leak integrated fire neurons, we just look at rate-based model where uh, we characterize the neuron simply by the average firing rate that depends on the voltage as a sigmoid function. Uh, in this model quality will reproduce a phase diagram of uh, that's in the experiments. Namely, uh, if you kill the neurons, we exit oscillation phase and either end up in high activity or quiescent phase. And it depends on the, uh, what is the uh, sensitivity of the neurons. So we observe in this model that this uh, termination of the oscillation phase happens in a very particular pattern. Namely, 
-hmm. namely uh, the oscillation uh, terminates via the separation of the network onto the constantly high firing neurons and constantly low firing neurons. So we study this separation in more detail. Uh, so first we explore the auto-out coupled network, which is like the simplest version of the model. For auto-coupled network, uh, we see that uh, this separation still occurs, which means that it is a spontaneous symmetry breaking. So like there was a symmetry auto-coupled, but still it separates onto uh, differently firing parts. This separation occurs as a standard pitch for bifurcation as we change the slope of the sigmoids. Uh, then we would like to study not like more general network, like not auto coupled, but like arbitrary connectivity. Then we first do the uh, simplest possible neuron model, which is on off neuron. So a neuron either firing or not. Which uh, correlates, which is the uh, slope of sigmoid equal uh, which is like the sharpest sigmoid possible. So uh, then we see that uh, this separation is exotically controlled by the pure topological feature of the network named K cores. And we see that the phase diagram is uh, demonstrates the steps and each step occurs when uh, we kill the next K core of the network. In more general case, so like uh, when we have uh, firing rates based model with uh, non-step function, but with like proper sigmoid. And when we have arbitrary connectivity, we see that uh, particular motifs with more heterogeneous vertex degree distributions uh, are more often for separate states, while homogeneous are more often for oscillating state. Basically, basically we see that the, the motifs that are more often in uh, separate states are always more heterogeneous and that are more often for oscillating phase are always more homogeneous, which kind of indicates that indeed separation happens uh, when, uh, when separation happens when we uh, uh, have uh, like two heterogeneous network. So yeah, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Valentin. It was very interesting. Uh, I will start with a question. So since uh, the um, neural network that you are uh, uh, studying here is the one that generates right. Can you identify or uh, would you have some idea on how to identify how the frequency of that right is set through network properties or some graph measures? Uh, yes, so the simplest, uh, like in the simple model, let me return to it. So uh, we, Mm, let me go back to the very first slide. Sorry, it's a little bit slow. Yes. So, uh, so here, uh, the like the main period of oscillation happens when calcium returns to its uh, equilibrium value. So basically, the burst terminates because the calcium is too high, and then calcium slowly returns to equilibrium value, and then the burst happens again. So basically, the uh, the period of oscillations is almost completely controlled by how fast calcium decays. So basically the period of oscillation is strongly uh, co uh, connected with this uh, tau C uh, quantity. However, it's not the only thing that defines it. Also, uh, the question is uh, how sensitive should the network be to, so, the, so that the burst would happen again. So this will uh, be defined by uh, the uh, by this uh, by, by the sensitivity. So basically, uh, as we vary like this R0, uh, then the network is more sensitive. So then the like the burst will happen early. And as we vary tau C, uh, the calcium will decay, decay slower. So the burst will happen later. OK, that's quite interesting. While we wait for questions from the participants, of course, if uh, we Richard or Pablo want to jump in, please do. Um, can, you tell a, a bit, can you tell us a bit more about the experimental part? How did you manage to do those measures? Which uh, um, animal was your model and how the recording were done? Oh, sure. So uh, the experiment was done uh, like 
in like previous work, so it like w was not my work so bad. Basically, the experiment is done on uh, the slice of uh, repository complex uh, in vitro that is uh, taken from uh, mice. Uh, so, um, and, uh, so this experiment is done in uh, not in vivo but in vitro. Like it's like more convenient to just study this. Uh, this activity propagation in just and in the slides, I think they have like from uh, like from like about 1000 neurons, like from 600 to 1000 approximately neurons in this slice. And so what they do, they uh, uh, they modify uh, like they gen they genetically modify the mice such that the neurons will be sensitive to the laser activation. So basically, they use optogenetics to activate. Uh, particular group of neurons and with and then in this slice they uh, choose uh, like from one to nine neurons and they see if activation synchronous activation of these groups of neurons by laser uh, results in a burst of activity in the uh, whole network and basically they see that like when you activate like just one neuron it's very rarely but sometimes you still can can get can get the burst from one neuron but like extremely rarely when you go to four it is like almost it is pr quite likely like maybe 80 percent of cases and like when you get to nine it is like almost always so like when you like activate nine neurons it's like almost guaranteed to get the burst and okay it sounds quite a, an experiment, both from uh, the experimental side and from uh, the... Yes, so whole... like this experiment like is described in this paper and like the like this results. So uh, so we hopefully will publish a paper with like this results in this experiment, like in a, uh, like maybe like in a couple of weeks. Yes. And like the results about the K course and all this is like we published it in this paper. Okay, and uh, what what happens if uh, you um, let's say if you adopt a kind of a targeted attack approach as in other uh, uh, network models? So basically, you start removing either specific connection or specific nodes. Is, are there some nodes that uh, the network is able to cope without, or it's a uh, it's quite uh, fragile in the sense that it will break immediately. Yeah, basically it is uh, the uh, important feature of this uh, K-core. So basically K-core is the, in, this, in a sense, the most connected part of the network. So like when, when we, we see that, like when we remove the nodes that are not the part of the K-core, then it almost doesn't change the situation. So basically when we kind of like remove the outskirts, but when we, uh, kill the neurons in K-core, it's strongly changed the situation. So basically, if you will shut off like the airport somewhere like in Alaska that like is kind of remote, it won't change the situation. But if you will uh, shut off like the uh, airport in Philadelphia where like all the hops uh, uh, happen, like where all the transfers happens, then like you will strongly disrupt the communications. Yeah, it was a good analogy. <laughs> Any questions from uh, the participants or uh, Pablo or uh, Richard? Yes, I would like to ask, uh, well, first, thank you for the presentation. And, uh, well, first, I have like more uh, like a technical question. Um, how do you simulate in your model uh, this uh, optogenetic uh, stimulation of the in vitro cells? I mean, specifically, which uh, variable of the firing rate model do you modify to simulate this uh, activation of cells uh, through optogenetics? Uh, so, for the uh, so we uh, study the activation uh, not in firing rate model but in leak integrated fire model, and there the stimulation we uh, modify is just insertion of the additional voltage. So basically, uh, we kind of uh, choose randomly uh, like a group of neurons, like let's say four neurons out of like our simulated 1000 neurons, and we just artificially uh, add the voltage like above the threshold, 
and basically that's how we stimulate it. Basically, that's the same what uh, what laser do. And since the laser does it like in such a way that they produce like few spikes after it, so basically that's what we do. We we manually uh, pull uh, pull them above the threshold of spiking like few times. Like uh, export, like, like an experiment that they reported it was like round seven. So like we just do the same. Okay, thank you. Another question, more uh, regarding the experimental part. Uh, do you think that uh, your results will be modified uh, if you repeat the, this experiment with uh, in vivo, uh, in the sense that in vivo you have more uh, external connections that can uh, influence the behavior of the network? So do, do you expect that maybe in vivo, for example, this uh, activation of four neurons in order to get the, the bars, this result could be modified or? It's very hard to do this experiment in vivo because the preprocessing co complex is a, is uh, is in, band, in 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 the brain stem. So basically, it's very hard to reach it. It's like in the very centrons of the brain. It's like like it's basically to get this complex. Like uh, unfortunately, they need to kill the mice. So like you you like needs to basically to reach it. You kill the mice. Yeah. Thank you. So it's very hard to do anything with it in vivo. In vivo, you can add, so, so like to do experiments with this complex in vivo, you can do pharmacological experiments like adding opioids that would change the sensitivity. And there are like very nice experiments where you change the sensitivity of the neurons by adding some particular drugs. And it's also leads to uh, different uh, uh, pattern uh, in this oscillation. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. We had a participant that wanted to ask a question, but uh, he, I think he got disconnected. Wait, there is a question. Um, Sotirios, would you like to? I think that's like the to, same person, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Sotirios, would you like to ask the question yourself, or should I go on? Okay, I will do as before. I uh, will start reading it, uh, but if he joins, uh, it's. Uh, it would be okay. So in uh, the N versus delta V phase plot, what do the blue plate pixels mean between oscillatory and highly active state? Oh, uh, thank you. It's a, a good question. So what uh, what it what it means uh, is that uh, like we can classify oscillations of two types. So like there can be like physical like true oscillations that like produce the desired rhythm and this oscillation should be like should like go as uh, from like kind of low uh, values of voltage to the high values of voltage so it should be uh, so so that like they would indeed produce the uh, the breathing however from mathematical point of view there is also something that is not just fixed high activity but something that is also kind of like oscillations. And that is like a ripple on the surface. So basically the network does oscillate, but it is always uh, above uh, the threshold. So basically, so it's like, it's like mathematically, it's like purely ad adequate oscillations, but biologically they just do not uh, do what they do. So we just uh, put them as different colors here to, to distinguish them. and. Like at this, like with these parameters, it's like very, just like a, sorry, just like a small uh, layer. So like it's almost not not noticeable. But like with other types of parameters that are like that are less physiological, this area can be like pretty pretty large also and noticeable. Yes, but thank you for the question. Yes. Okay. Uh, in more details, like you can see, like in this paper, like we discuss it there in more details. Yeah. Okay, now I would like to ask. Uh...